Hi guys, welcome to my channel and I am here for the conclusion of the reading rush. I made a TBR. I thought about doing daily vlogs, but I'm just not a vlogger. I don't even know what to do with myself or do with the camera or what I'm supposed to be filming. I'm just really not that interesting, which I know a lot of people say when they do these things, but I'm actually really not. I think this entire week I went to work and I read stuff, I played on the internet and I watched TV. And that was essentially what I did this entire week. I mean, obviously sometimes I do things that are a little bit more exciting, but this week was not one of those weeks, especially if I wanted to try to read like seven books which I did. I did want to try to read seven books. And in order to get that done, I actually had to change a few things that were on my TBR. So let's get into what I actually did read. The first thing I read, I actually don't have with me. It's in my car. And that's actually where I read it for the read a book in one place challenge. And that book was Fairy Tales from Electricity by Francesca Lea Bloch. It was an incredibly short volume of poetry, basically with a theme of looking for love, finding love, losing love, and learning to love yourself kind of thing. That was like generally what I got out of it. Um, a lot of her novels are actually more in the young adult, though they do have some adult content, but they're, they tend to be a little bit more young adult. Her poetry, however, especially in volumes like this, she has one called Nymph, they're actually adults and they're a little bit erotic and it's not my favorite of her writing, like that's not really my thing. Erotic poetry is just not my thing. But I mean, it was fine, it was short, I read it in like two days on my lunch break at work, I just sat in my car and read it. And it, it was fine, I guess. I am still actually kind of mad that I paid as much as I did for it, but it was fine. And then the next book that I have is for the five word title. It did look, it's five or more, so this one did count it. And it's called, Didn't I Say to Make My Abilities Average in the Next Life? This is, a light novel, so it's a very, very easy read. It's volume one of many, as far as I know. I think there were at least seven when I went to the bookstore, but I'm not entirely sure that's the entirety of the series. And this one was cute. I read this mostly in one day, I think. I might have started a little bit of it the day before but I think I read most of it in one day. So this book is about an 18 year old girl who is basically good at everything. She's a genius. Everyone expects so much from her. Everyone's like pushing her to study, to do more, all that. And because this is her life and she's kind of pitted against everyone, she doesn't have any friends anything like that. So one day uh, after her high school graduation, she sees a truck about to hit a little girl. No one's doing anything about it. And she rushes in there and pushes the kid out of the way. She dies instead. And God's like, yeah, this was not supposed to have happened. We were supposed to save that little girl but all these things and you know but luckily you jumped in here you saved her everything's good however you're dead now but we'll give you a chance to like live again and because she had such like extraordinary abilities i guess in her old life she wanted to be average in her next life she's sent to a world that's not advanced like earth currently so it's like a different world but it's like much less advanced there's magic 
and she finds that God's definition of average is not actually average. It actually is very good. I am considering getting the next volume of it. I've got a lot to read now, but I will get to it eventually because I do kind of want to find out where the story is going. So the next book that I finished is Nightwalker by Jocelyn Drake. And this one I picked for the category of a non-human main character. It says she's a Nightwalker on the back. And as I started reading, I realized Nightwalker is vampire. So she is a vampire character, but she actually is more than that. In this book, there is a vampire hunter that's after her, but he's kind of mysterious because he's got some powers that humans don't really have. And he's been around a lot longer than humans normally are. And he wants to kill her. But there are other things that want to kill her too. So they have basically the Fae in this, though they're different and they're not called the Fae, but they do mention it like, this is what people know as the Fae. So they do have that in here. And they have to basically try to save the world before the hunter tries to kill her and she tries to kill him because they want to basically be the last one standing to try to kill each other. I don't know. I I was actually kind of bored with this through like 95% of it. And um, I do have two more. I did kind of pick up a little bit at the end to kind of make me wonder what was actually going on. But overall, I didn't love it. I listened to part of it. I signed up for the free trial of Scribd because they had it and like two others that I was going to read through this on audiobook there. This one was one of them. I listened to part of it. I read part of it. Um, I still didn't like it that much. It was okay. I mean, this one came out, I remember, at a time when urban fantasy had just exploded. So there was so much urban fantasy. And it was fine, but even now, I'm like, this is just like all other urban fantasy. I haven't read urban fantasy in a long time. But it, it was okay. So I might continue reading the ones that I've got. I think it's only a five book series maybe, so maybe I'll actually finish the whole thing. But we'll see. Um, yeah, that was that one. So the next book that I had in my original TBR was My Plain Jane. And this one was for a book that I wanted to read last year. I picked this up at Target last year. Never really got around to it. I read like maybe the first chapter or so and then just didn't get into it. And I honestly, I did not get into it the entire book. This one I also listened to part of on audiobook and it just, it didn't make it better than reading it. I don't know. The story is interesting, I guess. I just kind of didn't like the plot progression so much. So in this, Jane and Charlotte Bronte are in the same like orphanage and they're friends. Charlotte's a couple years younger and all this time she thinks that like she's Jane's like best friend, only friend, whatever. And Jane's a little weird. She talks to herself. Then she finds out when someone from the ghost hunting society that they have comes looking for Jane and Charlotte discovers that Jane can see ghosts and that's why they want her. And all those times that she was talking to herself, she was actually talking to ghosts. But Jane's not into that. She wants to be a governess. So she gets the job at Mr. Rochester's there's the whole thing there, but the actual story of Jane Eyre is actually like what Charlotte Bronte is writing. So there's all this stuff that happens in there that are supposedly the true stories of what's going on. It's got ghosts. It's got, it's got weird stuff. I don't know. And I don't know. It's just, it, 
And it's not that I actually disliked the writing, because I actually really did like it. I liked the breaking the fourth wall, occasionally talking to the reader. I didn't mind the whole ghost thing, I just didn't like where it went. But what I actually really disliked about this book was Jane. Jane was horrible. Jane was just a terrible, rude, nasty character. Like, the whole time, like, there was nothing likable about Jane in any way. And there was a ghost in there that could have done stuff. We could have saved ourselves a whole lot of trouble if this ghost that's, like, constantly there, uh, I don't know, went through some walls, looked at some stuff, figured out what was going on. I don't know. That could have happened. It didn't happen. But it did conveniently at certain times. So, I don't know. I didn't... I just didn't like where the story went. So the next three books are ones that I added in after I took three others out. So I took out Nerve, Milk Run, and Dead Girls. Like I took those out mostly because I just didn't have time for them. The first one that I picked up afterwards was Gingerbread by Rachel Cohn. So when I was at Target the other day, I was looking around their book section and I impulsively bought some book that she had written uh, maybe late last year that was there. And while I was thinking about it, I was like, I wonder if I have her first book. Because I know she did other stuff. But I know Gingerbread was one of the earlier ones, so I'm like, you know what, let me look and see if this was her first book. It was, at least according to Wikipedia. So I actually listened to this one on audiobook um, yesterday because it was really short. And that's part of the reason that I picked it, but also part of the reason that I picked it was I had added some things on script that were debut novels that I kind of wanted to look at and suddenly they're not available anymore which kind of defeats the purpose of my entire free month trial so honestly I'm not even sure I'm going to keep that but this one was there it was short and so I read it like that on audiobook and I had read it like a long time ago but I'd like kind of forgotten everything about it. I remembered it having like a similar sort of Wheatsy Bat kind of thing, but not as like fairy tale ish, I guess. But it had some similar sorts of things to that, which I had liked at the time. I was like, well, do I like it now? Because I have books on my shelf that I'm keeping but maybe I don't want it anymore. So I do like it, and I may or may not keep it. I don't know. This is a terrible copy that I got, like, pre-owned. It's a terrible copy in terrible condition, which I don't like. But, yeah, I picked that one for my debut. It's about a girl who gets in trouble at her boarding school and her parents kind of like over the summer they don't feel like she's like learning and growing and being better so they send her to live with her father and she gets to like learn about that part of her family everything like that and you know presumably grow as you do in these sort of books and yeah I think it's a nice story I don't know that I would keep it after this when I do another declutter. I might. I don't know. But that one was for debut. So the next two are related. So I have Paradise Kiss Volume 1 and 2 by Ayazawa. And as you can see, purple. A lot of purple on the cover. And there is a Japanese movie of this manga series that I watched last night. And the manga itself has five volumes. It was from 2000, 
I think. I think it was originally serialized in 2000. These books started coming out in 2002. And, I mean, you can tell they're a little bit dated in the way they, like, talk about things and stuff like that. Some of it, though, I would imagine is the translation and not the actual Japanese. It still is a interesting story. I, I read it, like, probably back in 2002 when they started coming out up to like when they were uh, done releasing. It's about this girl who's studying because that's what her family expects of her. She's not really feeling it. She doesn't like feel any desire or interest in school. It's just like what she's supposed to do. And then one day she meets these art students and they want her to model for them for their school like end of year like fashion show. And at first she doesn't want to, at first she thinks it's weird, but then as she realizes that, you know, they have passion for what they're doing and she doesn't have any passion for what she's doing, you know, she starts getting involved in what they're doing. She starts like making friends and relationships and whatnot with the people that are in this group and she grows a little bit. As far as this one, it never made it to the fashion show in the first two volumes. That comes much later. In the movie, it shifts things in the timeline to, I guess, make it flow better as one cohesive story. But one thing that I thought was interesting about the movie is they didn't focus on the relationship as much as the manga does. Like, pretty much straight from the beginning. And I actually kind of liked that. I am not sure if the manga ends like the movie did because it's been, like, so long since I've read the manga. Probably not since it was actually published, but I liked the movie. The Japanese movies are never like that great with wigs, anything like that. So this girl was wearing a wig for a while. It looked like a wig. If nothing else, if it wasn't like an actual full on wig, she was wearing clip in bangs and it just, it was kind of weird. But I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the manga. It covered two of my prompts, a purple cover and book and movie adaptation. Though technically I didn't finish the whole story. I did finish one volume, which I would consider one book as most people do. So I feel like I got it, seven books. I did have to switch a few of them out just to get in the books. But I think I did it. I think I got all the challenges plus the seven books. I will see you guys next time. Bye.